Hi, in today's video we will demonstrate how to set up the integration between GitLab and Engineering Workflow Management that is EWM or earlier called as RTC. So for the integration to work, following our few executables that needs to be present on the Git server which will be hosting Git Integration Toolkit as well. Along with these libraries, we have already installed and configured EWM and GitLab servers. And a basic project area is created in both the applications. So we have a pro simple project area in GitLab and a scrum based project area in EWM. So for setting up the integration, we first need to make sure the permissions, uh, permissions uh, needed to register a Git repository in EWM are enabled. So uh, select the role which needs to uh, which will be responsible for registering the Git repository and then search for the permissions. And by default, the permissions for Git, Git related permissions are disabled. Manually enable them and save the changes. Now, so once the changes are saved, let's move to the source control uh, to register the Git repository. So the option to register the Git repository is available in the source control dropdown and click on registered Git repositories. And on the right hand side, you will see a plus icon to register the Git repository again. So the moment we click, it opens up a form and it has few mandatory parameters. The, the first, so the first mandatory parameter is the name of the uh, repository. So it can be any name. It could be the name of your Git project area or any name. And then next is uh, the URL of your Git project. So it need to be the URL of your Git project and not the GitLab instance. Update the same and then define the controlling process area. So this comes in place when you are uh, enabling uh, preconditions that we will see in the later part of the video. Save the changes and the moment we save the changes, the hosting server details uh, and other uh, details get uh, enabled. So also you will observe that it generates a key that again will be used for configuring the file system hooks. Next is uh, we will update the hosting server details so it will generate a webhook URL. So select the GitLab and then uh, we have to update a secret authorization key. So the, it could be any random value that you would like to provide and then uh, it has the value as webhook URL. So as the integration as uh, EWM and GitLab does not share a common user base, so we need to enter a functional user. So any user can act as a functional user. Add the same, save the changes and copy the webhook URL and then move to GitLab and settings, project settings and webhooks. and update the URL, copy it from EWM and the same secret key that we have specified in EWM and in the events you can select the default is push event and now you can also use merge request events enable, disab enable SSL verification and add the webhooks the moment uh, the hook gets added it gets listed in the bottom of the page and you can just test it with a simple push event and it should return a status of 200 OK if the communication is working fine. Yeah, so we have a 200 message, so the communication is working fine. So now let's go move ahead and quickly test uh, if the integration is actually working. For that, we will update the file in GitLab. And during the commit, we will provide the work item details. So I am updating the file. And now in the commit message, so first we would need a work item. And before we create a work item, let's authorize the Git request. So 
this is a needed step for the linking to work and now let's move and create a sample work item of type task save the work item note the work item id and update it into the commit message and then click on commit changes okay so the changes are done now let's go and see if the work item displays uh, the commit link so yeah we have an update refresh and here you can see the link the integration between EWM and GitLab is working successfully now let's see how we can configure process enforcement in the form of pre-receive hooks for push operations so to configure process enforcement you must have a shared user repository or shared user base uh, or ensure that some attributes of user profiles in EWM and GitLab server matches then EWM comes with a set of predefined hooks, uh, pre, sorry, predefined preconditions that can be used to limit the linking of work item depending on the criteria uh, set by the precondition. So to define the preconditions, uh, click select precondition and follow up actions from EWM admin project area and add create a new configuration, select uh, the git push operation select the role against which uh, the precondition needs to be applied and click on finish then it gives you a list of available preconditions that we have so depending on uh, the requirement you can select any of these uh, preconditions so the purpose of this demo i will be using a restrict associate to closed work item and we will uh, save the changes to the project area and then we will configure the hook server side hooks for this precondition to work Okay. So, uh, before uh, uh, configuring the uh, hooks, we need to have a server level access to the GitLab server as the configurations will be a file system con uh, file system settings and you need to have git toolkit downloaded. So, I am already in the toolkit path and starting 7.0 7 we now have a ready to use uh, scripts which can be used for configuring and updating uh, the parameters also it has a readme file which in detail explains on the usage of the commands or the scripts and the different parameters that it takes so using these commands you just need to pro or using this script you just need to provide values to some of the variables and it will configure the git repository with all the required settings that we earlier used to do manually so first command is configure dot sh space git and hyphen h is for the help parameter so this command is uh, needs to be run for all the git flavors irrespective like you're using gitlab caret or github so this is the basic co uh, pre uh, command which will be updating the git config file with the uh, with the EWM repository key and the URL details so let's frame the command and let's see what all variable it takes so first is hyphen G which is the git repository path so it needs to be the path file level path to the git uh, project area so uh, um, in newer versions of git the project area by default gets uh, saved as a as a hash path instead of the name and if you want if you want to find uh, that detail that hash value easily you can move to the git lab move to the admin area and select the projects and then select the project data that you are integrating and then uh, check for the uh, uh, attribute git rel relative path so this uh, path is basically the same as what you will have uh, the way it is uh, stored in the server level so copy the same and update it in the command okay so it didn't paste it and it just updated 
so we'll update the comma uh, path again okay so it's not working so maybe I'll manually type the path this time So the next parameter is hyphen k which is the repository key so this is the same key which we get when we register the git url uh, in ewm source control option so copy the same And then last parameter is the hyphen r. So this is the URL of your EWM server. And then enter to run the command. So you can see it creates a first thing is it takes a backup of the existing configuration and then it updates the details in the configuration file. Now next command is very specific to GitLab so it depends uh, so this set of commands are available for each Git flavor that we have so as we are using GitLab so this is the uh, syntax so let's frame the command and let's see what all variables or the inputs that it needs so first is git con uh, configure.sh and again the first parameter is hyphen g which is uh, the repository path to the GitLab project the server level path so we'll copy it from up Then the next parameter is hyphen r which is the URL of the GitLab instance or the GitLab server. Then the next parameter is hyphen k which is a user token from a GitLab user. So to generate that uh, move to the user uh, properties and select on access tokens and give some name for the token and then select the expiration details in the scope select as in API and click on create personal token so once the token is created the and you refresh the page the key gets lost and you will not be able to get retrieve it again so save it somewhere for future reference update it into the uh, command parameter and then hyphen l is the trace level so which will come into picture uh, when we are investigating like f in case of some issues if you want some traces to be set so this is the parameter so i'm setting it to two then hyphen u is the functional user details so you can either enter the user id or the email address then uh, hyphen t is the path to the git integration toolkit and then hyphen s is to skip the verify ssl so once that is done uh, okay so the command is not executed again because there is a space in the git project path so let's remove the space and execute the command again Just quickly re verifying the path to the project. So, again, it has updated the configuration files, it updates the permissions also, which are needed for executing the files. And we can further go and check the configurations that it has a uh, configuration update that it has done to the hooks file or the dot config file in GitLab. So move to the project area path of GitLab. We'll first verify the dot config so you can see the repo URL and the repo key are updated via command line. 
now let's go and test the integration if it works fine now I'll move to the project area and we'll update a file and we'll commit a link sorry we'll commit a work item so again before that as we have set the precondition to prevent association to close work items so we will create a sample work item of type task and we'll move it to closed state So note the work item ID and let's uh, update the file in GitLab. Update the work item detail in the commit message. Click on commit changes. So you can see the details. So as we have set the trace to uh, two, it updates all the details and it also mentions the preconditions because of which the commit message has failed. Now let's update the work item detail to a valid work item or to an open work item and verify uh, if the integration is actually working or not. So, click on commit. Okay, so that's updated. Now let's go and check the work item. So yeah, so you can see both the work item links, one with server hooks and one with the web hooks are working fine. So that completes the demonstration. Thank you for watching the video.